Hey guys, it's Laney. Well, I'm getting ready to start on my hickory chest project. Um, that's what we're getting into right now. Now, it's a raised panel hickory chest with um, mortise and tenon joiner <coughs> with a cedar lining. The um, wood used is uh, kind of reclaimed wood. Um, in a sense, I, I, don't, I don't know if it can be considered reclaimed. Uh, it's kind of a bittersweet, uh, not too long back, uh, don't know the timeline. I got a phone call from my grandfather and a hickory tree happened to have fallen on his home. Um, once the tree was, you know, taken down and the repairs were done to the house, of course, um, he had this huge hickory tree laying in the yard and uh, asked me if I wanted it. Well, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I jumped on the chance. So I took my truck trailer over there, uh, loaded it up. That was a daunting task. It was a pretty good sized tree. I took it to a local mill and had him mill it into uh, four quarter stock and eight quarter stock for me um, for my shop. After a few days, uh, he, uh, the Sawyer, call him Robert. Uh, Robert had the lumber milled up for me and uh, gave me a call. I went and picked it up and it's been out drying, um, air drying ever since. And uh, now I actually have a chance to use it. Uh, uh, client of mine asked for a uh, chest, didn't care what kind of wood I used. Uh, the only specification was no visible screws, cedar lining, it's got to smell like cedar on the inside. He doesn't want it to smell like cedar on the outside. And, um, you know, just uh, make it a hundred years chest, make it the best that I can make it, uh, which is easy enough to do. Um, so to give you an idea now i'm not going to get into the a lot of the milling process to get it down into usable lumber um, if you want to know how to take rough lumber and mill it into usable stock there's plenty of videos out there and uh, i just don't think that uh, you know it'd be kind of repetitious for me to do the same thing but i will give you a kind of a, a general idea of where the uh, wood and all came from these are slabs. These are my eight quarter slabs that came out of some of the small uh, parts of the logs. And uh, these slabs, along with some of my four quarter boards uh, you see over there stacked, are going to be milled down uh, to rough dimensions, resawn into. Uh, four quarter stock or you know uh, one inch stock and then I will plane and mill it down to you know it's three quarter final finish but uh, beautiful wood um, it is actually uh, got some features in it that I really like and, and, and that I want to use in this project and, and some of it is it was beetle born or, or, or uh, infested I guess at one time the tree was a little beetle so there's little bore holes and uh, give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Let's see if you can see this. See all those little black dots? Those are little beetle boreholes. Um, and the uh, blackening of the wood, I'm not sure what caused that, uh, but um, that's a... Uh, it's got a pretty good look to it. Now, I'm just going to use a regular you know raised panel bit set it comes with a rail and style bit as well as the panel bit the raised panel bit and um, the raised panel has got a nice feature to it so it'll have a nice look this is some MDF that I just ran a test you know uh, panel on just to uh, you know s see how the bit was going to do and and how the what the look is going to look like so I knew what to go with but uh, it's uh, hopefully going to be an interesting project. Hopefully you'll enjoy it, uh, you know, watching me build this uh, chest. And it's going to be a couple of series, um, a, a couple of videos, because I don't think I can get everything in in 15 minutes, no matter how hard I try. So it might be broken up over, you know, two or three videos. Um, so we'll consider this part one, uh, the introduction of the Hickory Chest. Um, so let me get uh, the camera set up, and then we'll start with... Um, routing the routing style pieces. Okay guys, I'm over here at my router and um, 
I've got my, I went ahead and installed my rail bit. Now, as far as, you know, the rail and style construction, the rail bit, the rails, and this is one of my test pieces here, has that little tenon on the end, and the rails go into the style. And uh, what I mean by that is you've got your vertical style, your horizontal rail, turn it around the right way, and it slides in like this. You want to make sure that you got a nice fit. And you want to make sure that it's nice and flush. And your setup is going to be the most important. Uh, once you have a nice setup, then uh, you're pretty much good to go on the rest of your pieces. So, the first thing we're going to do is uh, adjust the rail bit up to where you have about an eighth of an inch on this lip right here. And that's a good number to shoot for. So, um, I, I like it. I, I think it uh, works well, that eighth of an inch. So, that's what I set my bit up for. And the, there's not a lot of stability when you're running your end rails through here. So what I do is, because my router does not have a T-slot yet, this is, this is the router table that I built for the extension of my table saw when my router broke not too long back. I, had, I needed a router table, so I built a router table extension for the table saw. And I don't have a T-slot in here, so I have to kind of, there's a few workarounds that I've got to do. On, on, on a few things because of I may not have all the proper tools or, or the right tools um, to do what I need to do so I, I have to do a lot of workarounds and, and one of the workarounds for this particular uh, project is I got a nice square piece of block here good size uh, it gives me a lot of stability when I set it against my fence I can butt my rail right up to it and run it through and uh, I've got plenty of support to do that. Um, that way it's a little bit safer and my hands are clear of, you know, the spinning blade. Um, always make sure that everything's unplugged, you know, when you're setting up your uh, routers or saws or anything. It's always good safety practice to do that. All right. So now that we got the right height for the um, rails... The next thing we want to do is set up the fence and depending on the type of fence you have um, your setup should be pretty much the same my fence because this is a router table extension my fence moves and then it clamps down on both ends to um, keep everything where it needs to be the first thing that I do or that you want to do is clamp down one side of your fence and then on this rail bit <clears throat> if you notice there's a nice bearing right here uh, and it's perfect for taking some type of straight edge uh, and this is the straight edge I use when I set up my router bits um, I always try to use router bits with bearings and you know a lot of times you can't but most of the time I can because it's it makes it so much easier to set up um, but basically, this straight edge will sit against the uh, bearing of the router bit. And then I can take my fence and line everything right up. And once that's done, then I'm ready to go ahead and start... Um, routing all of the rail pieces so what we can do now is uh, I need to plug in my router and uh, we'll get started okay guys hearing protection and eye protection is always a good thing need your ears and eyes and uh, 
we'll get started. And this uh, backer board, not only does it give me some stability when I'm routing my rails, but also it helps out with uh, tear out. You get a nice clean cut um, when running through because that ingrain, you know, tends to want to tear out. Well, having that backer block, you know, helps to prevent that. So this is the first one. Got a few more to go. We'll get all the rails routed and uh, then we'll get the bit switched out and put the style bit in and uh, we'll get started on that. We'll show you how that does. <laughs> 